Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother, usury of money, usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. Unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury, but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury, that the Lord thy God may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to in the land whither thou goest to possess it. When thou shalt vow a vow unto the Lord thy God, thou shalt not slack to pay it, for the Lord thy God will surely require it of thee, and it would be sin in thee. But if thou shalt forbear to vow, it shall be no sin in thee. That which is gone out of thy lips thou shalt keep and perform, even a free will offering, according as thou hast vowed unto the Lord thy God, which thou hast promised with thy mouth. When thou comest into thy neighbor's vineyard, then thou mayest eat grapes thy fill at thine own pleasure, but thou shalt not put any in thy vessel. When thou comest into the standing corn of thy neighbor, then thou mayest pluck the ears with thine hand, but thou shalt not move a sickle unto thy neighbor's standing corn. Welcome to Jazz Learning, study number two. This is your host, Christian M.C. Fulmer. USA, part one, usury. It's, this is shortly after Independence Day, 4th of July. Indeed, there's much to be thankful for. For in this nation, we have quite a degree of freedom and privilege in which so few in the world have. And is and such a freedoms and privileges are diminishing with the passage of each succeeding year. Now, that is not to say that uh, we should be con we should be complacent, content. We should be content in all things as long as, as long as the Lord has given us life, for no day is promised. But complacent, no. For I find it odd that of. Uh, Yes, the gospel message by all means is of which should be preached, should be taught, and brought up to all nations. Although it seems that there is a divorcement between, for some reason, between the gospel and the law, even though Christ himself said he came to fulfill the law. And the law really is, well, essentially... The covenant between us and the Lord God extended, continued. Which means that there are ways of which we need to live our lives. It's, we, the church has treated Christianity very much like we treat college. With, um, well, the focus is what? Getting into college. That's essentially, somehow, strangely, what K through 12, if not before many of you unfortunates before, and for many of you very unfortunate who had extended, <laughs> an overextended college tenure after, the whole point is what? Getting into college and then getting a job and then, well, life, something like, something along life, along the lines and whatever, and death. You know, it's kind of like just the whole careers and the career, whole career aspects. I mean, they. I mean, as far as I can tell, how often do people talk about careers? It's more about just getting a job <laughs> and dreams and whatnot. That's no longer really discussed. Now, granted, a lot of you probably think off the top of your heads. Well, university system is especially indoctrinations, camps, blah blah. Well, it's true, but. So is much of our so is much of our way of life. Higher education is just an extension of such. That'll be in another topic for another day. But that's a this is definitely not an endorsement for higher education as it's strangely called. Where I don't even quite think we understand in this nation in particular as much of the world, but this nation in particular, my own, my homeland, our homeland for all you fellow Americanos. <laughs> Of what education is. But that is not the topic. The topic is a new vocabulary word from, I assume, most of you. If not, well, there you go. I can be wrong. Lord knows I can be wrong. Anywho, usury. What is usury? Um, any 
monetary, financial, commercial practice of which you gain or demand interest. So yeah, if interest is involved, it's usury. That's the pretty straightforward, no holds bar, clear cut. There's really no amb ambiguity to it. A number of jurists, aka lawyers, will argue that it's the unjust acquisition of interest, or the excessive quanti quantity of interest. But no, my dear listeners, usury is just the acquisition, the gain, the demand, any level, any amount of interest. Before I proceed, I'm going to be, this is a biblical study, I'd, I'll be a I'll be doing a thesis statements, these statements of PowerPoint presentations for others, you know, in, in other matters, and perhaps this one in due time. I've talked about this before in earlier work, but a great reference to go over, I mean, really, that just sums it all up within almost 400 pages with plenty of notes and sources. The bibliography is quite impressive, is Michael Hoffman's Usury in Christendom, the mortal sin that was and now is not. If you want to get a good start on what really <laughs> the church for since his obsession, and <laughs> even during the time of the prophets, that's what we're going to be going over, then, you, then this is the book to to get. As far as I know, it still has not been banned on Amazon or any other books online booksellers. I could be wrong. But currently it is not, as far as I know. It's Usury in Christ, Christendom. Usury, U-S-U-R-Y, as spelled in the title. Usury in Christendom, The Mortal Sin That Was and Now Is Not, by Michael Hoffman. All right. Anywho. Of course, there's plenty of other sources where that came from. This, I'd say, is... Well, this is the one that you want to get. And for me personally, it was printed in 2013, which is the year I graduated from my four-year university with my bachelor's degree, history and political science. Oh. So, it's a little bit of a personal thing. I didn't, really, didn't realize that until years after the fact, but still. It's quite something, really, when you see what was done during a turning point in your own life. But anywho, usury. So what is the significance of this? Well, before we dive into the law, and remember Christ references the law quite a bit. In fact, usury was one of the critical reasons why he whipped people and overturned you know, tables and threw the money to the ground when he more than once chased out the money changers, exchangers, sellers, whatever you want to call them. They should not have been there out of the, the, out of the temple. Yep. You're going to find out why. For starters, let's go over to Moses. This is the law of Moses. This is, this is, the, this is the early reminder of how to love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. And, Lord your, and remember, that's loving the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength. Indeed, loving your neighbor as yourself. This is a part of the law. This is still a part of the law. But we're going to be seeing what the, not just national, but international consequences are of violating this unknown law. So, Exodus chapter 22, starting with verse 25. If thou lend money to my people, poor by thee, poor, so, poor by thee, thou shalt not be to him as an usurer, neither shalt thou lay upon him usury. If thou at all take thy neighbor's raiment to pledge, thou shalt deliver it unto him by the sun that goeth down. So, they give you something as a pledge, as, well, as we call today collateral, especially if it's something that they need. 
aka special. Now notice the example is a Raymond, so so a jacket, a coat. Remember, they didn't have full scale. What should I wear today? And you got several options of wardrobe back in the day. Remember, everything was everything was handmade with old school hand powered machinery involved here. Uh, at best. <laughs> at best. So, imagine today's. We what, what do we give them collateral for loans? Um, things like our homes. So yeah, I would say that's quite a necessity. So someone pledges something that they need, like in this case, a cloak. And today's. You can go as far as uh, your dwelling place, then yeah, you definitely want to make sure that's given back. Four, that his covering only, well, once again, think about your house, the roof over your head. It's his raiment for his skin, wherein shall he sleep? And it shall come to pass, when he crieth unto me, that I will hear, for I am gracious. So, bear in mind, Think about this. Think about this. We're going to put this in perspective because, once again, I'm not reaching. And just to be fair, how about this? Because it sounds... It, you know, but think of it in terms of something larger, like a house. You give somebody your one and only jacket. And you live in a place that, you know, it can get cold, it can rain, high winds, whatever. What is the disadvantage of there being interest? For the vast majority of listening, well, that advantage is um, you have to pay more than what you originally got the loan for. So, question. Isn't it significantly easier? Aren't you less likely to default on your loan? If you... Don't have interest, especially if you're an if. Remember, the reference is a poor person in scripture. Poor, see, this is where we need to stop being so full of ourselves. Poor can refer to any person who lives essentially day to day, if not week to week. So, you're not somebody who has a notable excess, a notable abundance of what you need. That's why for me personally, I don't consider myself poor. Yes, I do essentially live, do essentially live, uh, I'd say every other, by every other week, paycheck for me, paycheck, by, you know, bi-weekly, but nonetheless, I'm able to save plenty of money and plenty of resources in the long run, especially during the summertime where I have less work, so I can still pay my rent and take care of my family. Although, in many ways, I'd be what we call border, by biblical standards, borderline poor, but not quite. <laughs> if anything, if anything, uh, if anything, you know, if I were able to live as healthy and as well off as I can now, thank the Lord. As modest and simple as it is, and my wee little apartment, <laughs> well, let's face it, compared to a lot of people's, it's to these days, it's a mansion. <laughs> My wheel apartment here in rural Arizona. Well, anyways. But regardless, these are people who can't really afford to live beyond their means. A.K.A. they should not be in debt. If not, by all means, they don't want to be in debt. So imagine that. It is against the law. Now, I will be fair, though. The interesting thing about usury is that even though it's Highly condemned. It's looked down upon. The framework is in that of, and this is important. If thou lend money to my people, so if you are if you are Hebrew, is an Israelite, a Judean, whatever it may be. You are to not engage in usury, especially 
especially with a fellow poor member of your people. By equivalent, if, at me as American, I should not be engaging in usurious practices with a fellow American, especially one who is not as well off as I am. Especially one who has who gets who has to get paid paycheck to paycheck, who has to work every day. I have the privilege in my job to have sick days. Some people don't have that. Many people don't have that. But you can certainly hopefully I'm trying I'm trying to emphasize and highlight the point here. The severity of charging interest because because some of us haven't quite caught on yet. Well, think of this. See, we're to this is this is between my man to man, but this goes to the higher level in, you know institutions. We'll get into that pretty soon. But the lowest of lords thing is this: do not charge interest. So whatever you loan, don't expect more. Especially from somebody who has to <laughs> who has to work. Oh, and uh, if they pledge something like something that they need, you know, in this case, their clothes, or today's often case, their home, uh, you can't take the home. You can't take what they need. You can't take, and you definitely can't take anything that's related to, this is another part of the law, you cannot take anything that, that is related to the way that they sustain themselves. So whatever they were their work or labor or trade or skill may be, you can't just walk off with what they use to acquire their sustenance. So nothing that is which is in need. So in short, short, you that's the expectation. This is the expectation of God, the Lord God Himself. If you make a loan, you have to be conscious about the fact, okay. Can this person or not pay back the loans? Secondly, can, you know. Second, you know. Secondly, that you can't take what they need from them as payment. Now, bear in mind, there's other things you can, but. If they still have a debt, well then, the rule of thumb is this. Um, you take what you can, you leave them what they need, and let's face it, let's not be legalistic. Let's not be, let's not be jurists, let's not be, not, let's not lawyer our way, finagle the, well, what is the meaning of a, of a want and a need, and blah, 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 blah. Come on now. Come on now, I don't got, got time for that nonsense. And sure, sure, we can get more academic. We can get more precise with these things. I, I, I was also a pre-law minor as well, but which is why I don't want to deal with that because I was also interned full time for a month in a medium-sized law firm. Ooh. It is so unfortunate that the that the on running the on running joke throughout the generations. For centuries, that hell is full of lawyers. Unfortunately, there's so much truth to it. Ooh, so much truth to it. Leviticus chapter 25, starting with verse 35. And if thy brother be so, notice brother, if thy brother, fellow member. So in our case, citizen. Especially your, especially, especially your, especially your, especially your neighbor. Especially your neighbor, somebody who lives in your media proximity, but really, we're talking about our fellow Americans. And if thy brother be waxen poor, so just like them, waxen poor, so something happened to them which had a falling out. Let's face it, these last couple of years have definitely done that to us as a whole. Some more than others. And fallen in decay with thee, then thou shalt relieve him. A stranger or a sojourner that he may live with thee. So if the brother is so remember the emphasis is the brother. 
fellow American who's either a sojourner and a stranger is somebody who's just there temporarily, but they're there under, well, they're under uh, both, well, legal and or because, well, situation, circumstances, there are some circumstances where it's kind of like, okay, I understand why you cross, but at the same time, uh, make sure that you, A, follow law, and B, uh, don't abuse your stay, aka be a brother. <laughs> At least, if you're not gonna, if you're not gonna enter in here legally like a citizen, at least act like one. And so, that's a sojourner or a stranger, so somebody who's, so somebody who is, so sojourner is somebody who's gonna be here temporarily. Stranger is somebody who plans to be here long term, and is from the outside. But they have put themselves under the status that they have chosen that you have a relationship with them under the status of a brother, so they may not be a citizen, or perhaps they are becoming a citizen, but that's the thing, like, the idea is that you, and it's not just a matter of, oh, and let me make this clear, this is not just a matter of political. Some of you are probably like, what, just because, no, no, no. This is not just a sense of they went through the formalities, they took the test, they pay their fees, whatever, that's not, they pay taxes, no, that's not, no. Remember, this is a people that are in covenant with the Lord God, which means that outsiders, whether they be temporary sojourners or long-term strangers, whether they become brothers, that means they are respecting they are honoring, if not engaging, in the worship of the Lord God. That they are, that they are heeding to, if not pricing me and fellow members in in the in His worship, in His will, or as we say today in vague terms, they share your values. Well, in this case, godly values, because usury, sodomy, and abortion are not, <laughs> are not legitimate. All right. So, with that said, take thou no usury of him, or increase. So don't charge interest, and, oh, or the increase, that's referring to a bribery. So he shouldn't, so you should be charging him interest, and he shouldn't have to, quote, quote, bribe you, aka pay you additional unwritten illegal fees but fear thy god that thy brother may live with thee thou shalt not give him thy, thy money upon usury nor lend him thy victuals for for increase i the lord your god which brought you forth out of the land of egypt to give you the land of canaan to be your god so remember so notice, the emphasis here is on maintaining brotherly relations with your neighbors. That you are not using them for financial gain. <laughs> You're, especially that which is immoral, if not flat out legal. Because remember, the emphasis of the law is, as reminded by Christ, and it is in Deuteronomy, by the way, to love your Lord your God, all your heart, soul, mind, and strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. And that love, and then love is a mutual bond of the worship of the Lord God and adherence to his law. To live as he would have us to live. A life of righteousness. To share, and if not by all means, to share in the salvation of given to us by Jesus Christ. But, with that said, so hopefully you've recognized, you're starting to get the idea, oh, so that's the issue with the usury, yes. Because, well, here's the next verse, few verses, and this is, now, this is where you, this is where you start to hopefully start to understand at this halfway mark 
of why usury is a problem. Why the charge of interest not just affects the relationships between individuals who live within proximity, but, well, society, the nation at large. If not the whole entire world. Because the whole entire world operates according to usury. Let's take a quick pause. For instance, what is the national debt? Keyword is debt. 30 plus trillion dollars. A debt is a form of credit. Interesting. Credit, and with that debt, with that credit, is attached interest. Which means, unnaturally, that money that doesn't exist, that loan, doesn't go away. If it's as if it has an artificial life of its own. And yet, what is the cruel, satirical irony of the whole thing? Somebody has to be paid that money that doesn't exist, and it's somehow growing. The rest of the world has the same problem. Very few countries. The clear minority of nations in this world are not in debt. And the rest of them might as well be. Why? Because the rest of us are so in debt that... <laughs> well, uh, we're willing to do anything to stay afloat, if not ahead, in the... In the uh, international monopoly game with our fiat currency which we're hoping to turn the digital to up the ante to one up one another in spite of this so called peaceful move for global brotherhood see that's the key thing with the whole idea of brotherhood and what the lord calls brotherhood whether it's amongst his people or the church Versus what man's humanistic ideas, conceptions, which are just satanic, occult like, and probabilistic in nature. Yeah, just, I just, well, I'll let the word speak for itself. We turn our attention over to Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse, starting with verse 19. Thou, so watch. So listen carefully. Thou shalt not lend upon usury to thy brother. We've already established who the brother is. It's not just somebody who's a person. It's not just another person. Oh, he's another human being. He's my brother. So thereby, no, no, no. Remember, fellow citizens, not just in the political sense, but in the spiritual sense as well. Like the closer to the spiritual, like that, that sharing of the covenant, the better. Usury of money, so usury of victuals, usury of anything that is lent upon usury. So no usury with brothers. Verse 20, unto a stranger. So a stranger, this is somebody who, and now here's, here's also the catch 22. The stranger is politically geographically an outsider but it also means and so this is where things can get pretty difficult well let me finish this let me finish the statement first unto a stranger thou mayest lend upon usury but unto thy brother thou shalt not lend upon usury the lord thy god may bless thee in all that thou settest thine hand to in the land whither thou goest to possess it so, now we're talking about strangers who are not brethren. See, these are, these, are, these are foreigners who are not brethren. So, what is the full definition of a stranger who is not a brother? This is not somebody who's just politically, geographically an outsider. This is somebody who is antithetical. To the worship of the Lord, to the worship of the Lord God, they engage in the practice of worshiping other gods, meaning that they engage in practices of abomination. They are essentially 
<laughs> for all intended purposes in practice against against the against the uh, political uh, structure of the land, the economic structure. I mean, well, we're talking about literally. I mean, they were literally at this. You know, this this is this, this is a lot of people. We're we're talking about people who engaged in sodomy, who engaged in a, who engaged in what we today call abortion, child sacrifice. These are people who engage in really their own forms of financial and, and uh, commercial uh, corruption. These are people who, by the way, were not too uh, were not too keen about keen about restricting the practice of usury. These are people who were not afraid to take what was the possessions, what was the necessities, the truly essential properties of those who were fellow citizens. In fact, this is a land where there, these are, these are people groups where there are tiers of citizens, tiers of subjects and denizens. These are peoples whose theology, whose philosophies engage in the in esoteric and exoteric a distinction. So meaning esoteric, for those who don't know, you are, this is the in crowd. This, you know, the small VIP clubs. And this could be people within the religious, political, and or financial military, militaristic faction circles, oftentimes overlapping. This is the, this is, this is the this is the elitist. This is the hyper elitist club. This isn't just this is what we call a, what's the term I'm looking for, the old boys club. This is beyond that. This is we have special revelations. We are the special kind of people. We are the quote unquote more evolved, so to speak. So we have the full rules, the exo exo exoteric. Is this is this is what we teach you? This is so we're going to give you the basic monopoly for sake of just simplicity. We're going to give you the basic monopoly rules, but we're going to have all the all the deluxe, all the extended rules, official extended rules to this game. And quite frankly, unless we choose you or believe or find you or find it to, to our personal gain or necessity or whatever for you to learn or know of or be aware of these rules, you're not going to know. We don't want you to know. Or if the word the information gets out, we're going to try to distract you and try to subliminally in some shape or form keep it away from you as much as possible. That's the kind of people we're talking about here. Lord God's not just saying, yeah, just worship. Because once again, this isn't the gospel message. Okay, just make sure that you just conceptually worship God. Make sure you know the gospel you're trying. Make sure you get saved. And just have faith in Jesus. Okay? But that comes with a life directed by His Holy Spirit in opposition to false spirits. To deceptive spirits, to spirits of violence, sexual immorality, deception, magic, sorcery, witchcraft, of which engages in this paradigm of of, of only some need to know and the rest of you, this is all you need to know as far as we're concerned. This hierarchy of personhood. <laughs> That's the stranger who is not brother. The stranger who has kept this anti-God, anti-Christ spirit as a whole. Now, why? So that's the thing. So, and, this, and Michael Hoffman argues this as well as he refers, references a number of other people that... 
So why the so the only exception for usury is essentially as a way of waging soft war with people who are, for lack of better terms, realistically speaking, your enemies. They're not living in your land, living according to your ways. They have no appreciation, appreciation, they have no respect. And as far as they're concerned, they want to, and they gradually will oppose, if not usurp, and to a great degree, a small number of them. This is throughout history. This has not changed. A small fraction, small percentage of them will act up rant and rave and that commits acts you know, disgusting or criminal, violent criminal acts. And meanwhile, the rest of the people who are, well, you know, I'm not, you know, that's, I'm not for that, but I'm not really for your righteous way of living for this holy set apart. So I'm going to either just allow this to happen or if not, I'm just, I'm going to fund it or support it directly or indirectly. Read Read the book of Kings, First and Second Kings. First Second Chronicles is related. It's it's retold again. This is what happened. This is what happened. Nothing's changed. There's nothing new under under the sun. So this is a soft form of soft form of warfare is that so you make so you make sure that make sure that these people do not have an equal footing. You do not want them to have to be able to thrive, if not take advantage. It's kind of like, look, I can't, like, like it's in the situation circumstance where it's like, I can't make you leave, but I'm not going to make it, make it, you know, comfortable for you here either. <laughs> if you want my help, it's going to cost you more. It's like, you're going to, it's going to cost you more. We're going to make sh we're going to keep you. And, that's, and it sounds undemocratic. It sounds unfair. But is the alternative that we're living now great? Where essentially, if you haven't caught on yet, where citizen is essentially treating others, their fellow citizens, those with money or without money or with more property, with more assets, with more wealth. And I'm not talking about billionaires, millionaires only, for goodness sakes. But realistically speaking, I mean, in the long term, who's going to win out? Well, anybody really who, who has the ambition and really pay and really takes a takes a takes a lesson out of the devil's playbook for sure. But anywho, yeah, they're going to win out. So, what was what was reserved for war is now being implemented for centuries. Because the early church, and much of the church in general, did not condone this. In fact, the title of the book says, The Mortal Sin That Was. It's a Catholic term. But the emphasis, but there's a reason why that, you know, that, that, that sub-title is there. Because mortal sin is, is, if you do this, if you practice this, you will go to hell. That's how serious it is. Now, it seems excessive, but so far, that seems like, okay, well, that's just an extra doctrinal thing, that's an extra church thing, but no, actually, that's actually pretty fairly accurate. I mean, so far, from what I've read you, does that sound like, does this sound like something the Lord will just brush off? No. If you want to live peacefully within the land I've given you, you don't do this. <laughs> In fact, it's Nehemiah, Chapter 5, starting with verse 6, And I was very angry when I heard their cry in these words. Then I consulted with myself, and I rebuked the nobles. Listen carefully to this. And I rebuked the nobles and the rulers and said to them, Ye exact usury, every one of his brother, his fellow citizens, those who are supposedly a part with it, who are, fellow, they're, they're, who are their fellow people, and I set a great assembly against them, and I said unto them, We, after our ability, had redeemed our brethren the Jews, which were sold unto the heathen. Get to imagine, through practice, through the practice of this usury, they basically they essentially sell sold out their fellow people to heathens, to people who are against them. 
who are their enemies. They sold out their own people to their enemies. And will ye even sell your brethren? Or shall they be sold unto us? Then held they their peace and found nothing to answer. Also I said, It is not good that ye, that ye do. Are ye not to walk in the fear of our God because of the reproach of the heathen, our enemies? I likewise, my brethren, and my servants, my exact of them money and corn. So money and food. So back then money was actually usually something of value-ish, you know, gold for gold, silver, what, what, what have you. So something of a, so something of an actual substance precious metal as precious metal and food i pray you let us leave off this usury restore i pray you to them even this day their lands their vineyards their olive yards and their houses that's why i made the the the, the inference of the house in parallel with the raiment also the hundredth part of the money so make sure you also give them back some money too to start off with and of the corn the wine and the oil that ye exact of them so why is this all being mentioned because a lot of this stuff are essentials if not the very things people were using for their work then said they we will restore and will require nothing of them. So will we do as thou sayest. Then I called the priests and took an oath of them that they should do according to this promise. Also I shook my lap and said, So God shake out every man from his house and from his labor that performeth not this promise, even thus be shaken out and emptied. And all the congregation said, Amen, and praise the Lord. And the people did according to his, to this promise. So two things to keep in mind here. Number one, who's being primarily addressed? The nobles and the rulers. So people of a higher class and with authority. And what happens? What will happen if they do not if they do not fulfill this promise to restore everything that they've gained through usury? That every man should be shaken out of his house from his labor, he'll lose his means of living. And if that is the thus even thus he be shaken out and emptied. That's the extent here. That's the extent here. This is how serious this is. This is the eye for an eye thing. And for, and for the Lord, for, and for the Lord, this goes as far as, well, loss of your soul. <laughs> loss of your soul, don't expect a good afterlife. Psalm 15. Short one, starting with verse 1. Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness, and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. Swear to his own hurt. Swear to your own hurt, meaning that you will fulfill a promise, even if it hurts you, and changes not. So you have integrity. You keep your word, even if you... Which is very much like that of somebody who gives a loan. And this is what's the important of this. This is in reference also to somebody who gives a loan. Remember, the whole so the whole purpose of the loan of so people will ask, like, well, wait a minute, well, how do you make money then without interest? The whole point is for people, brethren, neighbors, to work together and when it comes to business. To work together that somehow the person who benefits from the loan can in turn 
their financial stability, if not fallen prosperity from the use of a loan, can be mutually beneficial to the lender. So the prerogative, the focus, is not for one person to benefit from the financial exchange, but to, in a way, partner where both parties can gain something. You understand what I'm saying? You understand what I'm saying? Like so, but but I think since you can't practice usury, if the person is has to default on the loan, you cannot change your mind and say, "Well, I need to be given this, or I need this." If especially if something that, especially something that's of a necessity to to them. No, so the lender has to go in understanding that there is a risk, and they are not guaranteed recompensation from either their necessities or through interest because they're their brother they're their fellow man fellow worshiper of the Lord or at least respecter and honorer of the covenant they're their brother or at the very least their neighbor you do not you do not take financial advantage you do not use your neighbor merely as a means. Verse 5 concludes, He that putteth not out his money to usury, nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. So keep in mind, as we, if we come close to a close here, and thank you for listening. Thank you for learning with me. I hope you're getting to understand. Because what's the whole point of interest? Personal gain. What's the Lord about? Um, let's see here. Why do we preach the gospel? So that people can be saved. And then practice what? The fulfillment of the law. What's this? And as Jesus says, what's the summary of the fulfillment of the law? To love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. So to actually know what his law is. <laughs> and why? Because it's not just because of make him feel good. It's so then you can fulfill the law in completion, which is to love your neighbor as yourself. And by all means, bear in mind, Bear in mind, this is, bear, you know, bear in mind, like I said, this isn't just a matter of, oh, well, now I gotta, you know, this is not the whole kumbaya, every person's a person, and like, person's a person, but no. Usury is a subtle act of combat, of war, of fight, of war. It's a, if, if anything, it's a, it's like a micro embargo. Well, on an individual, it's like a micro embargo. Which means what? You have to be selective. You actually, <laughs> there actually has to be a legitimate grievance between you and somebody else who is indeed not, who is indeed flat out not your neighbor, not your brother, or even so, may technically be, and that's also the big thing too, is like, some people have gotten so, you know, there are people who have gotten so far that they act, they act like they're, they're not your. They're not of your people anymore. They're just. They're they're so against God. They're so against you. <laughs> it's going against so many people. That's like okay. I can I cannot engage in friendly financial relations with you anymore, because to do so would actually be endorsing evil. But once again, it's not done out of hate. It's done out of that I can't. I need to make sure that my part, I am not. I'm not. I'm not allowing you to continue to prosper in your wickedness. With my with my aid. 
And on the flip side, you're also making sure that those who are, those who are doing their more due diligence in being a neighbor and being a brother, that you're working together for you know for, for your mutual well-being. As they say this, I know it's lost in a lot of people. I get it. Our culture, our way of doing finances, our views of, well, don't don't look at you know it's like, like it's like Billy Graham who was by the way and by the way is from his from early on. I'll put I'll put a source below in the in the in the, in the description. Excuse me. He was an ecumenicist. He he's known for saying, "Don't focus on the issues; just focus on the gospel." And you know what? I'm paraphrasing, but you know what? In many ways, he's right. Except when you look at the full quote and what he meant, it's like, "Oh, one of the things though that he was trying to distract you, you know, distract him from, like, have you just not pay attention to was, oh, so the thanks, oh, so I guess I shouldn't address unrighteous." Wicked, corrupt living within the church, not collaboration with heathens, with the enemies of God. Heck, with people who are, for all intents and purposes, are enemies of mankind in general. Haters of their fellow man in practice. I mean, that's no. We have to be discerning. We have to make choices. It's not just a matter of conceptually. Emotionally, well, I believe in Jesus Christ. I have faith in Jesus Christ. I accept his, I, you know, I accept his, you know, his teachings. He is the Christ. He's the Messiah. His sacrificial death, his redeeming resurrection, the grace that Jesus given to us from the Father to become his disciple, to become the adopted sons and daughters of God. I accept that. But I'm gonna live like how everybody else is living, because after all, it's not about the issues; it's, it's about the gospel. Jesus was not a mild person; he was meek. But you know what meek means? Doing what you're supposed to do, <laughs> even if it's just off to the side, quiet, simple. No accolades, no attention, aka not narcissistic, but also at times doing things of which are going to upset people, especially when they're in the wrong. But anywho, before we close, major prophets, Isaiah, in chapter 24. He said he he you know he you know he you know, he tells that that the, the, you know that amongst the practices of the of the rebellious people of Israel, which includes usury, the land is being emptied of their population. Usury became exceptionally more common. At the, after the, in the early 20th century, sure there was a population increase, but there was also quite a bit of war. Much of the world was engaging usury. I'm not saying it's the sole cause, by the way. I'm just saying, hey, if you already got a fire, adding fuel to it, especially something like this, not a good idea. And then there's the fact that in the 60s. Changing of the changing of, of the currency, no longer backed by gold, made it much easier for credit. Fiat currency is the is the child of a credit system. And from and we did after World War II, we did have even before then we did have a deficit, but it was more or less stabilized and reduced. Blah blah, blah. but. It's pretty much not going away. Why? Because, well, uh, usury on the part of us citizenry and the part of our government. 
Government's in debt. We're in debt. Thank the Lord God, I personally don't have a debt, but according to the debt calculator, I share in it for some reason. But when you actually go through the numbers and the connections between that of the central banks, central banks, the private and the public sector at large, yada, 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 it makes sense, unfortunately, because technically people as a whole signed it, signed up for it, which is what helps sustain our living beyond our means lifestyle. Not fair to those of us who've already paid off our debts, but hey. We didn't read the fine print. <laughs> and then Oliver, and then Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Woe is me, my mother's this is chapter 15, verse 10. Woe is me, my mother, that thou hast borne me, a man of strife and a man of contention to the whole earth. I have neither lent on usury, nor men have lent me on usury. Yet every one of them doth curse me. So he's making it very clear that even in a rebellious, godless, synchristic, uh, occultic Israel that will soon be conquered and just conquered and held captive in Babylon, that even these people still have a deep <laughs> resentment to the practice of usury. Imagine that. It's like, I didn't even practice usury and these people still hate me. These, you know, these rebellious people still hate me even though, even though I don't practice usury. So even these people hate usury. Imagine that. And in the book of Ezekiel, my goodness, it speaks of usury so many times. But I'm going to end with this. Starting with verse 5. But if a man be just and do that which is lawful and right, hath not eaten upon the mountains, nor hath lifted up his eyes to the idols of the house of Israel. So there's idols in the house of Israel. There's false gods. Which, which, which come with false deceptive, if not just perverse practices. I, a lot of stuff we're going through, you know, today, imagine that. Nothing new under the sun. Anyways, neither hath defiled his neighbor's wife. A lot of that going on today. Neither hath come near to a menstruous woman. Like, sometimes the menstruous women are going near other people. And hath not oppressed any. And people toss around the word oppression like it's candy, like the word racist. No, this is you're taking advantage. Of, you're, you're you're just taking advantage of people just because you know, just because you just because you can, just because you, you think you can. And of course, there's and, and there's of course you know we can go deeper than that, but that's not the point. Anyways. But take this seriously. I know, I know we've heard, I know a lot of us have been bludgeoned over, like, being, this, this person's the oppressor, and these person's the oppressor. No, no. This is legit. Think of the communists. <laughs> think, of, think of the Bolsheviks. Oppressors, right? There you go. Yep, there you go. Alright, anyways. Hath restored to the debtor his pledge. Hath spoiled none by violence. Hath given his bread to the hungry, and hath covered the naked with a garment. He that hath given forth upon usury, neither hath taken any increase. So once again, has not received any interest when he gave out a loan, when he loaned it anything. And has not taken an increase, has not received a bribe or a special payment, wink, wink, you know. Hath withdrawn his hand from iniquity, hath executed true judgment between man and man, hath walked in my statutes, and hath kept my judgments to deal truly. He is just, he shall surely live, saith the Lord God. And remember, this isn't just a matter of living here on this earth. This is also living for eternity.
and Jesus himself in both Matthew and Luke he tells of a parable of the of the servants given talents they are to invest the money that they are given one servant is condemned by the master and Jesus himself is basically making the joke that wow you were so inept that you didn't even practice you 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 didn't even gain money even through usury <laughs> like in essence what you did was worse somehow worse than usury <laughs> oh my goodness so there's Jesus statement about usury it's like wow even this man somehow what he, somehow his ineptitude is is his unwillingness unwillingness you know to do anything with what the, what his master has given him was worse than practicing us usury incompetence what have you who knows perhaps even perhaps perhaps he was mild <laughs> he was so fearful he was so fearful he was so so much of a coward see Jesus doesn't like Jesus Jesus does not like cowardice either he was a meek man not a mild man because he, when he comes back, he's going to meekly uh, reclaim his dominion. A meek sovereign cannot do that. Sorry, a mild, my goodness, a mild sovereign cannot do that. The meek sovereign, the one who's got the power and just couldn't do what he needs to do, yeah, he'll totally do it. So that's Jesus' take on usury right there. It's like, wow, even, even this, even this other... Even this, even this, you know, even this, you know, other, you know, you know, in, you know, incompetent servant did what was did worse than use did worse than engage in usury. It's quite something, really. All right. So with that said, hope we have an understanding of, well, yeah, it is post. Independence Day, it is Independence Month, month of July, the summer of 2022. This is one of the many issues. Sami abortion are coming up. And yes, and yes, this is not just the mere fact of whether or not you, I mean, a lot of us have practiced, a lot of us have engaged in user. But there's also things of which we have to be wary of when it comes to sodomy, unnatural sex. An abortion, the sacrificial killing of children. It's not just a spiritual woo thing. Well, my intention wasn't religious or ritual. Well, no, it doesn't matter. Like that's <laughs> what you. Th no, <laughs> no, it's. You think the Lord's superficial? You think you think you think the Creator of heaven and earth just has us do things just because? No. He made us. He know. <laughs> he made us. He knows what he's doing, and he and he's telling us what we ought to do. He's giving us the grace, the power through the Spirit to do so. Otherwise, we will reap what we sow. Let us be, my dear listeners, the United States of America, a people united. Under, under the under the sovereign, the Lord, the King of Kings, and let us be a people, a new people, not in the not in the enlightened, not in the enlightenment, new agey cult sense that many people thought of back in the times of before the founding of the nation, but a new people of a new world meaning those who have who are regenerate of spirit who have given their hearts their lives their strength their minds their souls to the Lord God the way the truth and the life so that we may love our neighbors 
as ourselves. That is his eternal law. This is Christian M.C. Fulmer, signing out. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country, who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to every man according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents went and traded with the same, and made them other five talents. And likewise he that had received two, he also gained other two. But he that had received one went and digged in the earth and hid his Lord's money. After a long time the Lord of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Lord, thou deliveredst unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained beside them five talents more. His Lord said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. He also that had received two talents came and said, Lord, thou deliveredst unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents beside them. His Lord said unto him, Well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy Lord. Then he which had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew thee that thou art an hard man, reaping where thou hast not sown, and gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid, and went and hid thy talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. His Lord answered and said unto him, Thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not, and gather where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchangers, and then at my coming I should have received mine own with usury. Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which hath ten talents. For unto every one that hath shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that hath not shall be taken away even that which he hath. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory and all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. And before him shall be gathered all nations. And he shall separate them one from another, as a shepherd divideth his sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. 